Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So, in today's video, I want to talk about this tank, the Louvre, the German Tier 8 heavy tank. It's a premium tank, and it's probably the oldest after the IS 6 premium heavy tank in the game. And this thing has a really bad reputation, which I think is both justified and, to be fair, unjustified. It's, it's, we're going to have a deep dive into this one because it's not as bad as everybody thinks. Not really. It is a very misunderstood tier 8 heavy tank, to be perfectly honest with you. And I'm going to go through some of the tank compares. We're going to go through the armor. I'm going to show you some games and tell you what loadout I've got. But remember, this one isn't as bad as you all think. So let's have a look at the tank compare. Okay, so here we are, jumping into tank compare. And I've put the Louvre in with a load of other premium heavy tanks in tier 8. Now, I haven't taken all the premium heavies. I mean, the Emil 1951 is not there for obvious reasons. It's an autoloader. So I've only restricted it to tanks that it really is comparable to. And I've thrown in the Action X, well, just for a comparison. Now, as you can see, with the exception of the E75TS and the Carnarvon Action X, the DPM on the Louvre is pretty darn good. Okay, the AMX is also up there. The penetration is the best. It's got the best penetration of all the premium tanks in tier eight that are heavy. It hasn't got pretty good alpha damage, however, but it's the same as the E75TS and it's the same as the AMX M4. Its rate of fire is pretty darn good. Okay, again, not as good as the E75TS, not as good as the Carnarvon Action X and not as good as the AMX, but it's certainly better than the IS-6 and tanks like that. You can see his reload is pretty good. Again, just being pipped at the post by the E75TS, the Carnarvon Action X and the AMX. So it's not as bad as you think in that respect. Moving down to the aim time, wow, the aim time isn't too bad either. I mean, you can see there, it's pretty darn decent. It It is tipped by the Action X, but it's comparable to the E75 TS and it's comparable to the AMX M4. Its speed, however, does let it down. I mean, it is very slow. It's not as slow realistically as the Glacial. I mean, the Glacial is terribly slow, but it is a pretty clunky and slow heavy. And you can see that it, it makes a sort of, you know, when you look at the engine power, but then you look at the weight, you can start to see why it's so slow. Its power to weight ratio is pretty, pretty poor. It's the worst of all the tier eight heavies that are premium tanks. Same with its terrain crossing ability. It's not the best. It's a little bit better than the E75 TS, but that's about it. You can also see that its camo rating is absolutely rubbish. And it just really is. And it's the worst camo rating of all the premiums in tier eight. However, it's got pretty good co-efficiency credit-wise. It's got the best, actually, 185%. The other's got 170 to 175%. It's got the best view range. Well, it's comparable to the 75, the Keeler, and the Action X. But aside from that, it is the best view range. It's not got the best HP, but it's only being beaten by another 50 points by the, by the 75 TS, the Keeler, and the IS-6. Aside from that, it's average HP-wise. It is a weighty little beast, as you can see there. It is pretty weighty, but it has pretty nice turret armor. You can see frontally, it's pretty good. And it's not got that bad of hull armor, beating almost all the other tanks. You can see, however, when we go right to the bottom, that its win rate is not the best, not by a long shot. I mean, it's coming in at a 50% win rate with an average damage of 1,465. Now, that confused me at first because when you look at the DPM, you think, well, it's pretty good DPM. But I'll be honest with you, a lot of players, myself included, struggle to make this thing churn out a fair load of damage. And you can see that only the WZ111 and the 112, and the 112 Glacial are, well, worse tanks. All the others are beating this thing head and shoulders. So that's how it compares to the other Tier 8 premiums. Well, let's jump in and have a look at its armor profile. So here we have Louvre, and it's facing off against a 53 TP, which it will face. It's a tech tree heavy, as you know. 
And as you can see, straight away, you can see that the bottom plate is wide open and that the turret cheeks are also, well, pretty thin. Aside from that, it's actually a pretty solid tank. It's not too bad. You can sort of side scrape in it. Um, although you've got to be careful of that turret, but you can kind of side scrape in this thing. The biggest problem that this tank has is its lower plate and its turret. Now the turret, oddly enough, was, was a rounded turret. I mean, it sits effectively on what is a Tiger II chassis and the turret was rounded uh, with the ability to bounce and deflect shots. Unfortunately, in the game, it doesn't really do that, as you can see, because it's just not that great. It's got eight degrees of gun depression. You think, oh, wow, there you go. It's a ridgeline monster. But when you stick it on a ridge, it doesn't really do much. Look, I mean, the bottom plate is still wide open and the turret cheeks are still wide open. So you have to be mindful of this one. However, you can bounce a lot in this tank because I'm going to show you exactly what you can do in this thing. So that's the armor profile. That's what it looks like. It's not a big red tomato, but it's not as bad as a lot of people assume. Now, before we jump into some replays, I just want to show you my equipment loadout. At the moment, I've got calibrated shells. Why? Because I need that extra penetration. Even though it has got the best penetration in tier 8, I just think that the gun rammer bringing it down, it, you know, it just increases it by 155 DPM. It's not really much. I then got the overall defense system because I don't need the improved modules. I'm not running a camo net. Then I've got a supercharger. Now, Many people say, well, why have you got a supercharger? I think, personally, the Luva runs better with a supercharger. Now, I could have it with the enhanced gun laying device. That only gives me 0 0.3 off my aim time. I've already got a 3.9 aim time, which isn't that bad. Knocking 0.3 off that doesn't really alter anything, to be fair. Whereas if I stick in that gun rammer, it gives me just that little bit of oomph going over distance. And I generally find this tank works better with a gun rammer. That could be just me. It could be just me playing semantics. Give it a go. See what you think. I've then got the normal stuff, the enhanced armor, because there's no point having the anything else. I mean, 4% is better than 108 hit points, believe it or not. I think that. I've got the engine accelerator, because why wouldn't you? I then got the V-stab, because why wouldn't you have a V-stab? There's no point in me having the refined gun. I then got the toolbox, and I then got the eye end consumables, because that's what I do. But the big one there is that supercharge. So I've been tinkering with this over the last few days, and I found that the Luva performs slightly better with a supercharge. But it's your call. Moving over to its ammunition and its loadout. Well, this is my loadout. I have got... 25 AP, um, that's the standard ammunition. As you can see, it's dishing out of damage between 233 to 388, with the iron alpha being that 388. It has a penetration between 222 to 246, which is pretty, pretty nice. And it has a caliber 105. I then move it across, and I've got the, arm, the APCR, the Armor Piercing Composite Rigid. I've got 10 of those loaded. That is dishing out between 195 to 325 in damage. So you can see it's lower, obviously, than the standard ammunition. Penetration does go up, 279 to 309. And, you know, that's not bad. I then move over to HE. That is dishing out damage of 315 to 525. If you can get it to work and make it land. The average penetration of 57 and 63. It's got a burst radius of two meters. Remember, the burst radius is when it does that splash damage. And I've got five of those loaded. So I'm not going to go through the consumables and the provisions. I mean, that is sort of up to you. I just wanted to show you that. But let's jump into a game and see what this tank can actually do. Here I am on uh, Canal. I'm in a supremacy game. And I've skipped forward quite a bit. Well, quite a bit. I've skipped forward a minute. And there's a reason for that. I'm not, I don't want to show you this full replay. I only want to show you the end of this replay in real terms. So you can get an understanding of what the Bluva can actually do, what it can achieve. So, you know, we're dishing out a little bit of damage then. You can see that I've dropped the adrenaline because I wanted to put some pain onto this Emil 2. And I'm going to stay in this corner. I've already taken the A cap. And I'm going to be pushed by the Emil 2. I know that. So I'm going to try and get as much into him as I possibly can. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this replay is because in a moment, 
it's just going to be a, a colossal brawl okay and there you go there comes a t44 now okay admittedly he's, he's coming at me and he bounced there but i get a good shot into him now i've got to spin around because i've got the t44 and now the emil both pushing onto me okay now that's the tier 9 emil so i've got a tier 8 t44 and a tier 9 heavy the emil 2 and they're both after me and i'm in a louver and a lot of people say, oh, well, it's all doom and gloom now. But it's not, because if you remember the profile, the armor profile of this tank, you can get decent bounces off it. And you can, if you angle up correctly, you can be pretty successful in this thing. So I'm angling up to the Emil. Then I angle up to the T-44, put a shot into the 44. The Emil is the more dangerous target, not going to lie. But I think he's on his long reload. One of my teammates has just put a shot into him. I'm going to be lucky here and put him on fire. We bounced 2,000 there. It was a 2v1. Okay. Not only did we bounce 2,000, we dish out 2,938. We take a cap and we survive in a 2v1. That is what the Louvre is capable of doing. It is not as shabby and as shocking as a lot of people think. It is... A very versatile heavy tank it just has a pretty dire reputation understandably so because it's an old tank and people generally don't get on with it but it's not as bad as everybody makes out now I've been playing the Luba for the last few days and I've had some really decent games in it if I'm being honest and this game I played literally just before I decided to do this video although I had it in my mind to do this video yesterday to be fair because a lot of people sort of have probably got the louver and they're probably struggling it or a lot of people have got it and they just hate it because they think it's rubbish and it's actually not as bad as you think so here we are we're rolling out on flap map world that being himmelsdorf and whoa hello type what are you doing dude you're a tier nine you shouldn't be hurtling round corners like that um get a good bounce there because he aimed too high now I'm just going to give him a bit of a hard time. I'm going to pen his little cabola. And he's like, what, when, where, how? And I mean, that was a yellow rush. And I could see what he was trying to do, but it just didn't work for him. That was a bad shot. And it just bounced. But I'm still going to give this little Type 68, uh, Type 61, sorry, a hard time. Bless him. Look at him. Oh, he can't do much about it. Actually, it's a Type 68, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> bad. So we've already taken, well, we didn't take the kill, but we've already dished out 900. Here comes a Type 61, and, uh, well, he also wants to hurtle around the corner. I don't know what it is about these heavies at the moment. Uh, we're not setting the world on fire. 1,155, bounce 400, taking no kills, capped a base, or assisted in capping a base. Well, I'm going to go around and try and put some pressure on the Type, but, uh, well, he's trying to run the other way, so that's okay. We're going to pull back, and we're just going to put one into him through the wall, because you can. He's then going to miss me, and I'm trying to angle up every single time to this tank, I'm trying to track him now, but he just gets around the corner. He's a bit faster, not going to lie. Um, can I? No, just haven't got the aim time. So now I want to if I can push round onto him, I'm, I'm worried about their TDs that are over in that corner that I can see. Well, I'm going to push round onto him, try and put a shot into him here. Yeah, we'll finish him off. Now I can see there's a Tiger 2 pushing and push the ball seek out, the, uh, the, the Waffle Traeger out of the way. Can we track the Tigger? Yes, and we get a good bounce because we're angled up. Now we're going to push through to this little rock pile. We're going to try and get these tracking shots, try and get to this bottom plate of this tiger. You can see there's not much open there. Get a decent shot in, 280. We're now up to 2,564. We've bounced 710. We've taken one kill. Can we get a nice one into his side? Yes, we can. And he's finished off with somebody else. We're just shy of 3K. It's four against two. They have got two bases. We've got one base. We are now looking to push onto them. Now, there's a Cheesy and there's a Hori, a Tier 9 Hori. There's the Tier 9 Hori. I don't really want to pummel with him because he's got a lot of DPM. Um, well, a lot of damage, actually. So I want to push onto the Cheesy. Now, I can see that my team is going to be dealing with that uh, Hori. So I want to push onto this Cheesy. He's just taken out the Waffle Tractor. It's three, not Waffle Tractor, the issue. It's three versus two. Get a good bounce there. But, but, he has got the drop on me to an extent. 
gain I get I, I, that I out trade him and now what I need to do here is try and get the bounces and try and out trade him if I can this is why I'm up close and personal he is also using Pramo so don't just sit there thinking oh but it's food you're Pramo spamming he too is using Pramo that's why he was low rolling and I'm also low rolling but at the moment I'm out trading him only just only only just so I've got to get a good roll into him there Thankfully, I was able to switch to standard ammunition. I'm at 4.3. I need the bounce. I get the bounce. Switch back to the Pramo. Make sure of the kill shot. And boom. Get the kill shot. 4,416. 1,300 bounce. Took a cap. And got a couple of kills. What does that give me? Well, that gives me quite a lot. And it gives me that. The Golden M. So you can do decent damage in the Louvre. You can have decent games in the Louvre. You can get that damage up way past its average. Admittedly, uh, uh, that's an ace game. Admittedly, I got a little bit lucky. I'm not gonna lie. I got a little bit lucky with the cheesy, with the bounce. His fault, not mine. I mean, I was just trying to angle and wiggle and I, I, I played for the bounce and I managed to get it. Now, I was in a game like that yesterday, where I was at 4.4k, and I didn't get the bounce uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a 1v3. I managed to whittle them down, but unfortunately their Louver, who was full HP when he came hurtling around the corner, we were both one shot, he still had his adrenaline, and he was able to wipe me out. So I only got first class in that game. That's the reason why I'm not showing it. However, all is not lost. Because I just want to show you one more thing. So I wanted to show you this. This is the current season four Hall of Fame for tier eight and the Louvre. And as you can see, there I am, number one. Woo! So 4,413 is the best for this season so far on Blitzstars. Not overall. I mean, overall it's something like 6K. But for this season so far, it is the best. 4,000. 413 will get you first place in the Hall of Fame on Blitz Stars in a Louvre. So not too bad when you think about it. Anyway, that's my take on the Louvre of the German Tier 8 premium tank, heavy tank. I'm not saying it's a good tank. It's not. It has a notoriously terrible reputation and rightly so because it is a tricky tank. It's not an easy tank. It's not a new friendly tank. But it is a cheap tier eight heavy. And new players are more likely to get tanks like this when it comes along because they can afford tanks like this when it comes along. So it always dismays me when everybody turns this, you know, puts this tank down straight away without really knowing or understanding its overall parameters because it's not as bad as you think. It really isn't. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been the Louvre. By all means, comment and everything below because I'd love to hear more about you. And remember, guys, it's not a bad tank. In fact, it's so bad, it's pretty good. And until the next time, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun and being happy.